Hi, my name is Chris. Thanks for joining me on another video. Today I wanted to talk to you about my solar journey. It's been a bit of a long one, but I'm very happy with where we've ended up. And honestly, I wouldn't have had the guts to do it all at once right from the beginning. So I'm hoping that my story will encourage you to go that little bit bigger than what you were thinking of. I'm located in southeast Queensland, Australia, in the Moreton Bay region, just above Brisbane. When we bought this place, October two years ago, we'd already owned the car for just under six months. The house we had bought had electric everything, hot water, pool, and cooking. We wanted to make sure that we were set up as well as we could be for the electric car. Leading up to the install, we were able to find a really good solar installer, UV Power. They were able to understand our needs as an EV family. So anyway, the first system we decided to pop up was a 10.8 kilowatt system. It's got 36 longy panels, half of them on the east side of the house and half of them on the north side of the house. The system was designed like this mainly so that we could get fast charging as soon as possible first thing in the morning. With all of those panels facing east, this was going to be easy to do. So that system was installed on the 2nd of October 2018 and cost us $8,650. At the same time, we paid them to install the Zappi charger so that we could charge the car with just the power that's available from the sun. So with that system, we're able to produce an average of 47 kilowatt hours per day. Of that, we were self-consuming an average of 22.5 kilowatt hours per day. Obviously, a lot of that was going to the car. We were only importing about five to five and a half kilowatts per day. So we didn't have a bill. At the same time, we were receiving credits, an average of $850 per year. We were getting that deposited into our bank account each month. When the solar system was installed, the hot water system was on a special tariff to save a couple of cents when it ran. But we took that off the special tariff onto the regular tariff and installed a timer so that it would only run when we wanted it to. We ended up settling down to uh, turn on at 10 o'clock and be off by three. But most of the time it was off much sooner, depending on how much water we used. The other thing we did was change the element in the hot water system from 3.6 kilowatts down to 1.8 kilowatts so that the cloud wouldn't have as much effect on our ability to grab solar power when the hot water system was on. So the hot water system just ran for twice as long. With these few simple steps, we're able to eliminate our power bill altogether. So this is a typical summer's day where we are not charging the car. As you can see, the hot water system use here and the pool use here. Up the top, you can see that the system is clipping because we are not using enough electricity. The inverter just lowers production so that it doesn't export more than the five kilowatts as in completely wasted. Here is a couple of examples of when the car is charging. As you can see, the consumption goes up and down with the production. And here we have a nice sunny day and a good example of high self-consumption. This is a good example of enough production maintained throughout the day so that we didn't have any clipping. But in the middle of the summer, you can see the inverter clips anyway at its maximum production for around about three hours. After nine months of that system running, being very happy, we decided to investigate upgrading the system to something bigger. We would need to upgrade the house to three phase and change the inverter over to three phase as well. So the idea eventually came to play where we would double the system, adding exactly the same size panels and number of panels, also changing that inverter over to three phase and adding another inverter to handle the new panels. So the new Fronia Simo inverter was connected to 36 panels, one string of 10 facing west, and another string on the garage facing east and west with 13 on each side. So after going through the process required in order to upgrade the house to three phase, the new systems were added. 
after we sold the hardware that we didn't need anymore, our out of pocket on the second step was 15,400. So now we have the ability to generate 16.4 kilowatts across three phases, which means we only have an export limit of 15 kilowatts, which means that during the day, we're very unlikely to have any clipping because the pool pump plus normal everyday appliances in the house would consume at least that gap anyway. And that system was all fully upgraded by December 2019. And while that system was in play, we generated an average of 90 kilowatts per day. The main benefit of this system was the fact that we didn't have any wastage in production. We also had more flexibility on when we could charge the car and obviously it would be faster. The car can charge up to seven kilowatts per hour. Also with this system, our bill jumped up to a credit of 3,200. That's an average of about 260 per month. That leads us up to the third step in our solar system upgrade where we would pop on another system and a battery. Being a hybrid system, we could add panels at the same time. So it give us even more production. So this time we added 24 panels to the south face of the house. That's 7.2 kilowatts. Along with this, we added a Simo hybrid inverter from Fronius, a five kilowatt model. We added all the equipment to the garage the state government put up a grant of $3,000 and a $6,000 loan to help residents get a battery installed. So with this in mind, we decided why not? So we ended up adding a 10 kilowatt high voltage LG battery to a Fronius five kilowatt hybrid Simo inverter. Being that all of the hardware for the battery was going to go into the garage, we rewired the panels on the garage to the hybrid inverter. And the new panels that were going on the south side of the house would be wired to the old Simo inverter along with the 10 that are still facing west. We now have a capacity to generate 21.4 kilowatts with our 28.8 kilowatts of panels. However, the hybrid inverter does have a special function where it can generate up to 7.2 kilowatts, but the extra over the five kilowatts has to go to the battery. So if the battery has capacity available, that inverter can produce up to 7.2 kilowatts. So under special circumstances, we had a production to produce 23.4 kilowatts with an export limit still at 15 kilowatts. This part of the process was completed back in May 2020. It cost us $13,100. Being that this system has only been in play for a few months, it's a little bit hard to calculate realistic figures, but based on what we know so far, we're guessing to be able to produce around about an average of 125 kilowatts per day. And throughout the year, our total credit on the bill should now be around about $5,000 per year. To give you an idea, we're just in the beginning of November now, and so far the record day for the system is 170 kilowatt hours. We have also paid to upgrade the Zappi, as you probably found about in our last video. More details on that in that video, but that gives us the capacity to charge at 22 kilowatts. However, my car can only charge up to 11 kilowatts but that greatly increases the speed that we can charge the car and also how and when we can charge the car. For example, the car can be charging at full speed before eight o'clock in the morning now. And if needed, we could continue to charge all the way through until just after three o'clock. A lot of people do say that getting a battery isn't worth it. And I tend to agree with them, but our situation was a little unique in the way that we are offered the grant and the loan. We also have a unique situation of a lot of surplus now. With the Fronia software, we're able to charge the LG battery with only what can't be exported. What that means is when the sun comes up, the battery doesn't charge. It will continue and wait until there's excess solar over and above what's being used in the house and also able to be exported to the grid. At that point, it will start to charge the battery. 
This is better for the battery and also better for payback times. But I can hear you say, what happens on a cloudy day when you never get to that peak production and you can't charge the battery using those rules? That's true, it does happen every now and again. And we've programmed the battery to charge as normal from about two o'clock, giving it ample time to be fully charged by the time the sun comes down. I love that the Fronius gives you the flexibility to have these charge options. It really helps in a large system like mine, and it really increases the viability of the battery in the household situation, especially down here in Australia. So it's been a lot to take in, but all said, I'm very happy with what we've done. And like I said, I don't think I would have ever done all this at once, even though it would have saved a lot of money doing it in one hit instead of spread over several years. So I encourage you to ask me any questions you may have and I may even do a video about it. In the future, we'll all be driving electric cars. Gas will be a thing of the past. So, so one could say it's just a matter of time. Bonus time. This slide shows the MPPT performance of each set of panels for the best day last month. Here we have a little graph of the import and export as we are doing some cooking on an induction cooktop. Using a low setting, the cooktop comes on and off. And as you can see, this causes some slight import and export for a few seconds as the battery catches up to the usage. Here is a detailed view of the production and consumption first thing in the morning as the Zappi charges the car.